Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman Wright. So let's go to the next part of the system that the air is gonna see. The air's come in through our louvers and our damper, and now it's probably going to see a filter next. So let's go over filter basics today. There are a lot of different filtration and disinfection technologies available today, but I'm gonna to stick to just basic mechanical filters for this video and save other technologies for their own videos. Mechanical filters use media with porous structures that contain fibers or a stretched membrane to remove particles from the airstream. Particles in the air essentially attach to the media as the air passes through it. Originally, HVAC filters were used in the 1930s to keep dust and other particles off electric heaters. If you've ever been the first one to turn on electric heat at the beginning of the heating season, you know that that smell of burning dust off of elements. But now filtration is also important for indoor air quality, IAQ. But it is still important to keep dirt and dust off of HVAC components. Water coils and fans are less efficient when they get dirty. So how do filters remove particles from the airstream? So let's make a little room and find out. People often think that filters just have tiny holes that let only certain sized particles through, kind of like a colander or a sieve. This is partially true, at least for the bigger particles. But most media are actually disorganized bundles of fibers. They kind of look like this, and this creates a less direct path for air to move through. Kind of like that. So let's get rid of our air now. This also stops large particles from getting through. This process is called straining. Let's move this up to the top and make some room. Okay, so smaller particles get stopped a couple different ways. A particle that's small enough to navigate through the maze of fibers can still get trapped in the media fibers if it's moving too fast to make the turns. So if the air has to come in and make some turns like this, some particles are not gonna be able to make these turns fast enough and they're gonna get trapped. This is called inertial impact because the particle's inertia causes it to collide with the fibers. Next we have interception. This happens when the particle can maneuver around the media fibers, but the force of attraction between the particle and the fiber is greater than the particle's velocity. This is enhanced when the particle and the fiber are similar sizes. Now for the smallest particles, these particles that are so small that the motion of the air molecules around them can make them bounce around as they travel, so they move in a motion kind of like this as the air knocks them around. This is called Brownian motion. And since they're moving all around, they also get caught in the fibers. This is called diffusion. So let's make some room again. The efficiency of a filter is basically the percent of particles removed from the airstream. Lower efficiency filters are usually throwaway filters. These are like the cheap fiberglass filters that are used during construction to keep construction dust out of the equipment. Pleated filters would be the next step up in media. This gives a larger area of filter media than the fiberglass filters, so they have higher efficiency. From here you get into deeper filters like bag, pocket, or V-bank filters, which are usually about 12 inches deep and they have higher filter media area and a higher efficiency. You'll see filters rated with a minimum efficiency reporting value, or its MERV value. So you'll see MERV 8, MERV 13, and so on to MERV 16. For the filter types we just discussed, the throwaway filters are typically a MERV 5 or lower, fleeted filters are around MERV 6 through 11, and the V-bank type are usually MERV 11 through 15. I'll do a separate video on MERV and particle size and go into a lot more detail about this later. Higher efficiency usually comes at a cost, both in first cost of the filter and the cost of higher pressure drop across the filter. Once you determine what level of efficiency is needed for your application, the next thing to do is to look at pressure drop. In a new system, the higher pressure drop of higher efficiency filters can be accounted for in design, but in an existing system, Going to a higher efficiency filter may affect your fan performance and push it into a less than optimal operating range. You should also consider annual filter maintenance requirements. How often does the filter need to be changed and is that acceptable for the application? So that's a quick overview on filters. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for watching.